Hi everyone! In this video today I'm going to be discussing sensory processing issues. Now sensory processing issues are very common in the Tourette's community, the autism community and can also be a symptom of pandas and patterns. Um, and the first sensory processing issue I'm going to be discussing is visual processing and people can be undersensitive or oversensitive, like underreactive or overactive. So people who are overreactive will be very sensitive to bright colours and bright lighting and stuff and some people may only focus on small details rather than everything that's going on around them people may get distracted by um, things going on around them visually people may need sunglasses, they may uh, feel like everything's vivid in HD um, they may feel like everything's on really high contrast um, they may um, feel like the TV screens are blaring and they may squint um, you know, um, people might have trouble looking at phones because it's it's very bright, it, it gives them a headache. Um, so light sensitivity can come in many ways, um, but sometimes things just look too bright and too much contrast and it can be very overwhelming. Um, and people may have issues sitting under fluorescent lighting and stuff as well. Um, and there is something called Erlen syndrome, which is scotopic sensitivity syndrome, which is um, a perceptual a perceptual processing disorder where people um, their the brains have a difficulty filtering out certain wavelengths of light, and people with Erlen syndrome may have reading issues such as visual distortions when reading. Um, it can look like there are gaps between the text. The text may seem to move. Um, it it may look fuzzy, it may look blurry, it's different for everybody um, but visual distortions are a big part of it and people may also have headaches under the lighting, people may um, people may feel anxious under lighting or even hyperactive, hyperactive or fatigued, um, people may have issues um, with depth, depth perception under certain forms of lighting, um, so Erlen syndrome could be something to look into because it's very common in the Tourette's community although it isn't very well known um, but it's also a common tick trigger because with Erlen syndrome the brain is very overloaded. Um, so by managing the Erlen syndrome for some people it can, can decrease the ticks as well. Um, but for people with the reading issues they may use a coloured overlay. But for people who have other things such as headaches and migraines from it and stuff, people um, may have specially um, tinted lenses, precision tinted lenses, and it's different for everybody. Um, like everybody has a, a different colour that they need. So people will usually see an Erlen practitioner or they may have the intuitive colour meter test by an optometrist to find out what works for them. Um, some people also have photosensitivity. Now photosensitivity is the sensitivity to flickering, flashing and fluorescent lighting and for people with this they may um, have a reaction to, to, those light, to those sorts of lighting. Um, so for me I had photosensitivity uh, my tics would explode in public buildings and it was put down to anxiety, however I didn't actually feel anxious so we knew it wasn't that. Um, and then we realised, we went to a tick trigger workshop and my, they were talking about light sen sensitivity so my dad turned the lights off and I stopped ticking. And then we realised it was the fluorescent lighting, the flicker rate, um, not the brightness. Um, so it, it was a specific type of lighting. So we had, to, I had to wear amber rose tinted glasses to stop that and it was amazing because as soon as I put the glasses on the urge to tick just melted away um, and, and it was amazing um, but that's something I recommend looking into for some people. Um, the book Natural Treatment for Ticks and Tourette's by Sheila Rogers de Mare does have a lot of information on light sensitivity being a tick trigger in so that could be interesting but um, it's also inter interesting to note again different colours work for different people, um, grey sunglasses had no effect for me but amber rose ones were really effective so it sometimes can be difficult to find something that works but um, it, it did really help and also some people uh, say that electronic screens can be a tick trigger as well due to the the, the flashing and, and stuff so some people wear um, like blue light blocking glasses or might um, have a filter on their phone or something as well because electronic screens can affect some people. Um, some people may also be um, underreactive to um, underreactive to visual input so people may have visual stims where for example uh, stimming is self-stimulatory behaviour but they may um, move their fingers in front of their eyes, they may uh, move pens or pencils in front of their eyes, they may look at um, slowly flowing water or like moving objects or like shiny and sparkly things that can be some sort of visual stim. Um, people might also 
have trouble discerning um one object in clutter um and like that's like when somebody asks you to go find something that's right in front of you but you can't really detect it that's kind of what it's like um and some people may lose their place when reading as well um and some people may also really like bright colors and stuff if they're uh, underreactive there is also a, another issue that people with visual processing issues might have which is where when we're reading we may not actually take in any of the information we know that we're reading but we can't comprehend what we're reading it just doesn't go into our brains and it can be really confusing because we can read a whole page and have no idea what we've just read um i had that issue quite a lot um when my tics were at their worst i had that issue um and, and in my pandas fair it's very it's just very bad i had no idea what i was reading um thankfully it's a lot better now um but yes also um some people also have uh, visual issues. Uh, vision is different for sight. Vision is different from sight. Sight is literally just seeing things going around you, but vision is how your brain processes that. Um, so some people may have issues with eye teaming, which is the ability to move the eyes together um, in 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 a in a consistent way without excessive effort. And eye tracking is where people can fixate on an object and um, you know follow it with the eyes um eye focusing is the ability to keep um like keep good vision at all distances and um visual perception is the ability to uh, interpret and perceive uh, information presented visually there we go um and if anybody has issues with these it can affect learning and, and stuff and people may need to seek help from a behavioral optometrist for those issues now auditory processing um, somebody who is overreactive to auditory input, they may obviously feel very distressed in crowds because crowds are very loud. They may dislike loud noises and they may fear situations where they may come into contact with a loud noise, such as um, they may not like being around balloons or party poppers or anywhere where there may be a firework or something or just anywhere where there could be a loud sudden sound. And sometimes uh, people may also have uh, issues with the complexity of the sound. It's not always the, the volume, it's the complexity, like loads of things can be going on at once and it's really overwhelming. Your brain can't filter it out and people might also pick on, pick up on things that others can't, like the the buzzing of fluorescent lighting or uh, the, the blinds uh, making a noise or uh, anything really, you know, people usually filter things out but somebody with, with an auditory processing issue might be unable to focus on anything else apart from a very small noise in the background um that other people wouldn't notice and um people may have trouble with multiple people speaking at the same time it's incredibly overwhelming and frustrating um and people may cover their ears sometimes it's with repetitive noises there is something called misophonia uh, which is selective sound sensitivity syndrome sometimes that's when people hear chewing or repetitive noises it may cause a lot of anxiety panic or even anger attacks and that can be distressing and some people may have trigger words as well that set that off um and also just even if you don't have misophonia sometimes when you're in a sensory overload if there is a repetitive noise it seems louder than it is and it's, it's very overwhelming um and but somebody with uh who is overactive may actually have amazing pitch perception as well um but it you know it does cause a lot of issues if you're sensitive to sound because you may avoid certain areas like shops where there's lots of people or uh, music class music class used to be a massive issue for me i used to really dislike it because obviously loads of keyboard loads of keyboards going off at the same time ah <laughs> that's very overwhelming so i did used to have a massive issue with music class um but yes, people who are undersensitive to auditory input may have delayed reaction time um, and they may answer a few seconds later. I actually do this um, now, like somebody will say something to me. I know that they've said something, but I it takes me a few seconds to realise what they've said and then answer. So I just look really slow. Um, but but yeah, uh, that that's delayed reaction time. Um, people might perform better with background noise. Um, uh, people may, you know, tap on their ears and their ears can kind of feel empty. Um, and they may crave something to listen to in a way. Um, like, it's kind of weird, but I had this thing where I felt like my ears were empty and I had to sort of play songs loudly in my mind to try and fill it. I don't know if that makes sense. It might be due to an auditory processing issue. It might be something different, but you know, auditory processing issues, um, people need the sound, they can't bear silence. <clears throat> um, but yes, um, taste and smell. Um, for somebody who is 
over sensitive to taste they might only eat a specific range of foods and they might prefer bland tastes like uh, rice cakes or something um, and then somebody who is undersensitive might like spicy foods um, or something uh, somebody who is oversensitive to smell might gag at certain smells and they might get headaches as well from certain smells and they may avoid foods based on the specific smell um, but then somebody who is uh, undersensitive or unreactive to smell they may really enjoy scented candles, scented erasers, scented pens, those sorts of things um, so that can um, be a factor for some people Tactile, somebody who is oversensitive to tactile input, they may have issues with um, tags on clothes or the seam on socks or, you know, they, they feel things that other people can't, you know, some people might not be able to wear jeans um, because they, they might be too rough on their skin. Some people, um, some people might dislike the feel of water, uh, that was a massive issue for me. Water, I wouldn't brush my teeth when I was younger because I didn't want the water to drip down onto my hand, I was terrified of that. Um, so sometimes I feel the water as well on wet clothes. Some people cannot cope with wet clothes. Like if they go out when it's raining, it's horrible. Um, and you know, it, it can really be anything. Like um, some people might not brush their teeth due to the bristles as well. So uh, any sort of tactile input. Some people um, might also dislike light touch. Uh, that can be distressing for some people. Um, and then for somebody who is underreactive to tactile input, may like fidget toys. They might they may uh, like like the feel of uh, sensory aids and stuff um, and, and they may touch everything um, you know to try and get a sense of what it feels like um, vestibular now vestibular is a uh, sort of balance I think it's it's like your sense of balance and somebody who is oversensitive um, their swings may make them feel sick um, and their head kind of feels heavy as well um, and I think that um, they may be scared of movement activities and may be scared of elevators and stuff because it feels kind of like they're going to fall over. Um, but then for somebody who is under reactive to vestibular input may rock back and forth or sway side to side. That's me. <laughs> I've always had uh, vestibular processing issues ever since I was a baby. I can actually insert a video. Um, yeah, I've always rocked back and forth. So I definitely have uh, under reactive vestibular issues um, and somebody with with who is unreactive uh, may also like swings and trampolines, um, may like spinning um, and they may like to be upside down and they may uh, move around a lot as well um, and they may be unable to sit still and they may run places instead of walk. <laughs> I definitely do that, I'll be in the shop with my dad and I'll just go running off. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, vestibular is a, a massive thing, that's probably the sense that is effective for me most because I don't stop moving uh, but yeah proprioception proprioception um is a sense of where your body is in space so like if you close your eyes and touch your nose you know where your nose is um or like put your arm out you know your arm's going out but somebody with a proprioceptive uh, like processing, processing issue may not be able to actually sense that um so it's like you unconsciously know where your body parts are um but the receptors are said to be in the joints and ligaments um and it helps you regulate movement and posture and also um can also help with the appropriate pressure when doing tasks um but somebody with issues with that um they they you know if you if you tell them to close their eyes and touch their nose they might struggle to do it somebody who is oversensitive um with their proprioception may be reluctant to engage in um fast movements or weight bearing activities and they may have difficulty with personal space as they don't really understand where the body parts are in relation to another person or object or something um and people might actually you know struggle with the pressure when they're writing and stuff so that can you know cause them to break pencils or something uh, and some people are very undersensitive um so they may like uh rough play they may like hugs they may like a weighted blankets deep pressure excessive movement uh, they may seem clumsy and uncoordinated and they may uh, move around and, and stomp when walking or and the last one is uh, interoception and this is the sense of things inside of us such as um the feelings of hunger thirst needing the toilet nausea emotions um pain itching breathing and heart rate muscle tension 
temperature and gut feelings and people who are oversensitive to this may have constant aches or pains and they may be hyper aware of hunger and thirst and may feel hunger and thirsty all the time and they may be hyper aware of touch and textures as well and somebody who is under sensitive may actually be unaware that they're hungry or thirsty so they may not eat or drink enough and they may be unaware that they need the bathroom which can lead to wetting and people may also get hurt without realising and they may not actually feel pain internally if something is wrong which can obviously be dangerous um, and that uh, is also linked to self-regulation because if something like an emotion inside um, doesn't feel right typically we will try and, and immediately get rid of it but people for people with uh, in interoceptive processing issues, emotional regulation can be a lot harder as they uh, struggle with that sensation. Um, I hope this video helps and I hope that it is informative. Thank you for watching. Bye!